we'll be going over IRS Form 8941, Credit for Small Employer Health Insurance Premiums. So in this tax form, uh, certain eligible small employers will complete uh, this form and its accompanying worksheets uh, to request uh, to calculate uh, how much of a tax credit they may be eligible for uh, for paying health insurance premiums on behalf of their employees. As a general rule, uh, qualifying small employers uh, must have 25 or fewer full-time equivalent employees uh, that have average annual wages of uh, $58,000 or less. And even within those parameters, there are certain phase-outs that you must go through. So in addition to this one-page form, there are seven worksheets uh, which you may need to complete in order to uh, determine how much tax credit you may be eligible for. Before we go into this form in depth, it would be important to uh, cover a couple of key points. So you must be an eligible small employer, and there are three criteria to help determine that. So first, you must have paid premiums for employee health insurance coverage under a qualifying arrangement. In general, uh, you have to have procured this health insurance coverage uh, through a small business health options program, otherwise known as SHOP Marketplace. And you have to uh, participate in a health insurance coverage that requires uh, specific payments, premium payments as defined in the form instructions. Uh, you must have 25 or fewer uh, full-time equivalent employees. Uh, this doesn't mean that you can only have 25 employees. Uh, you can have more than 25 employees so long as the total hours that they worked, you know, say uh, maybe two part-time employees added up to one full-time equivalent employee if they each worked 50% of the tax year. And so uh, you have to have 25 or fewer full-time equivalent employees even if you have more than 25 names on your payroll. And then you must have paid average annual wages of less than $58,000 per full-time equivalent employee. So there are other restrictions to the uh, total amount of tax credit that you may uh, receive. It may be offset by certain uh, uh, state uh, tax subsidies, for example. And there are also limitations based on payroll and uh, uh, premiums actually paid. So uh, in the, the eligible tax period for any tax year beginning after 2013 is a two consecutive tax year period uh, beginning with the first year in which an, an eligible small employer files an income tax return with an attached Form 8941 where this uh, line A is uh, checked as yes, and line 12 is a positive number. So you can either be an eligible small employer or a tax-exempt employer. If you're an, a tax-exempt small employer, your uh, maximum applicable tax credit is 35% of your total premiums paid. Uh, for other eligible small employers, your maximum tax credit is up to 50%. So without ado, let's actually get into the nuts and bolts of this one-page form. As we proceed through the form, there will be references to uh, each of the worksheets. And even though I've completed all of these calculations offline, when we get to a part that mentions the worksheet, I'll pull up that worksheet lightly walk through the calculation that you would be expected to perform, and then we'll proceed on. So at the very top of the form, uh, you, you'll complete your uh, name as shown on the tax return and then your employer identification number. Uh, so I should have put the employer identification number up here, and now I have. So in line A, did you pay premiums during your tax year for employee health insurance coverage 
that you provided through a, a shop marketplace? Or do you qualify for an exception to the requirement as outlined in the form instructions? So either yes or no, right? Here's what I found. So if you enter no, then you can't file this form. Um, there may be exceptions if you are a partnership, an S corporation, a co-op, a state trust, or a tax exempt entity, but most general, uh, generally most employers would be ineligible to file if you did not pay premiums uh, through a shop marketplace. Now, if you're still completing this form by the time you get to line B, then enter the employer identification number only if it's different from this top number right here. So, um, you know, if I enter that, then that's a different uh, EIN used to report employment taxes, right? So, um, this might not apply to uh, most uh, you know, single entities, but if there are different business uh, entities involved in your health insurance uh, premiums, then you may need to complete the uh, this line here. Uh, and then in line C, if this asks the question about whether or not uh, you've completed another tax return in a previous year, uh, that would make this not consecutive because the requirement is that it's a two consecutive tax year tax credit. So in this form, you're completing this for the 2022 tax year. If you completed this form uh, either after 2013 but before 2021, and you actually have an attached form 8941 uh, where you've um, completed part A and then line 12 has a positive amount indicating that you might have taken this tax credit, then you would not be eligible to file this form unless an exception applies. Otherwise, you'll select no and then go straight to line one. Okay, so now we're in line one and basically the first thing you're going to need is a calculation or actually um, you're going to need line one uh, where you or worksheet one where you tally the employ uh, the individuals that you employed during the tax year. So I'm going to pull up worksheet one, which is uh, contained in the form instructions. It's not actually on the form document itself. Uh, so you have three columns, 25 lines, presumably for each employee. Although you can add more lines if you want to, uh, for eligible part-time employees, things of that nature. So column A are the employee's names. Employee, uh, column B would be the hours actually worked uh, by each employee. And then column C are the employee wages uh, that you paid uh, to each employee. And at the bottom, you'll total them out and you'll keep some of this information for later use. Uh, but right now, uh, you're going to enter the number of individuals that you employed during the tax year, consider that are considered to be employees, right? So for this purpose, we put in 20. And now in line two, you're going to uh, take that employee headcount and you're going to uh, calculate what that is in terms of a full-time equivalent employee. So when I pull up worksheet two, uh, you'll uh, take the total employee hours from column B in worksheet one, uh, you'll enter that total in line one here. You'll divide this by 20 hours of service per full-time equivalent employee, or you know, which is 2080. That's the number if you take a 40 hour work week and multiply it by 52 weeks in a tax year, you get 2080. And then you divide those two numbers and you get some number that you would put into line three here and you also put into line uh, two here. So uh, for our intents and purposes, all of our employees are full-time employees. Uh, you, um, so we put in 20. Now you're going to put in the average annual wages paid for the tax year 
And again, this is based on worksheet calculations. So you're going to take the employee wages paid from column three of worksheet three, sorry, column C of worksheet, uh, of worksheet one, and you're gonna enter that into line one of worksheet three. Then you're gonna enter the number of FTEs from worksheet two right here uh, and then you're going to divide those together. Your average annual wages will be the simple calculation of that, but any, um, any number that's not a multiple of $1,000, you'll round it down to the ne next multiple of $1,000. So for example, $2,999 would round down to $2,000, not up to $3,000. So we'll set aside worksheet three for now. And I've already done the calculation. We paid each employee an average of $28,000 during the tax year. You'll notice that there are specific instructions if you enter 25 or more, or if you wait, enter $58,000 or more, you're gonna skip these calculations and go down to, uh, you're gonna enter zero on line 12 because this basically nullifies any tax credits that you would have calculated. And then uh, beneath line 12, you'll simply see if there's an exception or a carryover or some other credit that may have applied um, as an exception to this. But those are the magic numbers that make you completely ineligible. However, there still is a phase out, which we'll calculate uh, momentarily. So in line five, we enter uh, premiums, or sorry, at line four, we're going to enter premiums that you paid during the tax year for employees that you included on line one for health insurance coverage under a qualifying arrangement. In order to do that, we need to pull up calculations from worksheet four. Now worksheet four looks kind of similar to worksheet one with um, one a couple of differences, right? There are three columns instead of four, or four columns instead of three, my apologies. And you're gonna list uh, the individuals in column A. You're gonna list your employer premiums paid in column B. Uh, in the form instructions, there are instructions on how you calculate column C, uh, which is adjusted average premiums. And we'll get to that in, in just a second, uh, what that actually means. And then in column D, hours of service. So there's some key information we're gonna take from worksheet four uh, for lines four and five. In line four, you're going to enter the premiums you actually paid during the tax year uh, for health insurance costs. So for this uh, illustration, we put down $50,000. Now in line five, if you operate in multiple locations, you may, um, you may have to do a couple of uh, calculations based on uh, what the average premium per employee would have been if the employees were en enrolled in a plan uh, with a premium equal to the average uh, for the small group market where you, the employee enrolled for coverage. So if you have multiple locations, uh, you may be paying more or less um, based on what the employee should have been eligible for in their locality. And if that number happens to be different, as indicated here on the worksheet, then you need to incorporate that difference uh, in the total, which will then reflect um, here in line five. Now it turns out that our employer, our fictional company is in one locale. Everyone is paying uh, the actual premium that they should based on the average premium of the market where every employee enrolled. So $50,000, $50,000, and then in line six, we'll enter the smaller of either line four or line five, which happens to be $50,000. So 
So now that we've got the total premiums either paid or that should have been paid, now we're going to work through a couple of filters uh, so that we can uh, get to the end uh, and determine what eligible tax credit we're looking uh, to uh, apply for. So the first filter is that you don't get a tax credit for the full amount of premiums, you get it for a percentage of the premiums that you paid. So tax exempt small employers would multiply this line six total by 35%. That's the maximum eligible tax credit that they can calculate. Uh, we are not a tax exempt small employer, so we're gonna multiply our line six number by 50% and we get $25,000. So line eight and line nine are further phase outs. Uh, so line eight is the phase out based on employee, full-time equivalent employee headcount. And then line nine is a phase out based on average income. So for, and, and of course, for each phase out, we're going to need a separate worksheet. So in worksheet five, we'll actually calculate the phase out um, based on FTEs uh, between uh, 11 and 25. If your employee headcount is 10 or fewer, then you don't have an employee-based phase-out. Uh, you would simply take uh, the number uh, straight from line 7. That's the maximum you're eligible for. However, we've done this calculation, and it turns out that um, our phase-out is exactly two-thirds of uh, the overall possible credit. So you're going to enter the amount from line seven right here, um, $25,000, and then you're going to enter uh, the employee headcount, which we have as 20. Uh, you're going to subtract that from line, or subtract 10 from that number and then you're gonna divide that by 15. So that gives us the fraction of two thirds, right? So, and that makes sense because the number 20 is two thirds between 10 and 25. So we phased out of two thirds of the tax credit. We're only able to claim one third of the tax credit. That's basically the gist of line five. And you'll see that that's the calculation we have here. Right, so we've phased out. We're only able to get up to a third of this number right here. Now, in line six, uh, worksheet six, uh, we happen to have an average salary of twenty-eight thousand dollars, so we don't have a income-based phase out uh, that applies. But if you did have an income-based phase out, then it would work very similarly. You would have to uh, walk through the income numbers, and then uh, depending on where the phase out is between twenty-eight thousand seven hundred and then fifty-eight thousand uh, dollars, then you would determine your phase out, and you would enter that limitation right here, or sorry, in line nine. And then once you get to line nine, we've gone through the different phase outs. You would also include any state premium subsidies or applicable tax credits that you've already used to offset your, uh, your income. In this case, we've received no state assistance. So even though we've phased out um, up to two-thirds of the tax credit, uh, we're not going to reduce it any further. Uh, if we had claimed tax credits, then we would have to reduce that even more. In line 11, you're going to subtract this line 10 number from line 4. So um, if we did have, say, $5,000 worth of subsidies, this number would be $45,000 instead of 50. Uh, as, as that's not the case, we're going to put the full $50,000 here. In line 12, we will enter the smaller of uh, either line 9 or line 11. Line nine is the smallest, so we're carrying that figure down. <coughs> so now we're on line 13. If line 12 is zero, we would skip line 13 and 14 and go simply to 
line 15, which would be a required um, entry for uh, partnerships, S corporations, cooperatives, estates, and trusts that are looking to uh, take a tax credit for premiums elsewhere, right, that are distributed uh, mostly on their K-1s. So uh, we're not there yet. We're simply going to go through lines 13 and 14 before we get to line 15. So enter the number of employees that you included on line one for whom you paid premiums during the tax year for health coverage under a qualifying arrangement. So in order to do that, you would have to pull back worksheet four, go through the head count, and enter that number, which happens to be 20. Now in line 14, we're going to include, enter the number of FTEs you would have entered on line two if you only included the employees on line 13. Okay, so we'll pull out worksheet seven, um, in which case you're going to take the total number of hours from column D in worksheet four, and you're going to enter that here. You're going to divide that by the hours of service per FTE, and you'll get a number that you can put right there. In this case, that also happens to be 20. So we did not need to use worksheet 7 in hours. We simply um, put in the, the number 20. So now, uh, the credit for small employer health insurance premiums, uh, depending on your um, what you receive as a K-1 or your 1099 uh, PATR, uh, uh, it will be for most uh, K-1s uh, for your Form 1065 and your 1120S, they're going to be marked with a code P in the uh, appropriate box. Uh, for states and trusts, uh, that would be a code G. And then for uh, Form 1099 PATR, which is taxable distributions received from cooperatives, this would be marked in box 12. None of those situations apply, so I simply entered zero here. And then for line 16, you're going to add lines uh, 12 and 15. Uh, this would be the maximum total credits. So if you zeroed out line 12, but you're eligible for a tax credit, in line uh, based on your K-1 or your 1099, you would still have some tax credit that you might be eligible to claim, right? So um, there, is a synth there is a purpose for applying for this, even if you are phased out uh, in lines 1 through 12. Uh, in line 17, you'll enter any amount that was allocated to patrons of a cooperative or beneficiaries uh, in the states and trusts. So um, that's not applicable to our situation, but if it does apply to your uh, situation, the form instructions have a little bit more detail on what to do for line 17. So for co-ops, estates, and trusts, you'll subtract line 17 from line 16, and then you'll stop here. Uh, you'll report this amount on IRS Form 3800, which is the general business tax credit. Uh, in line 19, we're going to enter the amount that we paid uh, for taxes considered to be payroll taxes for, you know, for this credit. Uh, so this would include federal income taxes that the employer was required to withhold from wages. This would... Uh, This would uh, also uh, include um, Medicare taxes uh, required to uh, withhold from employee wages or um, pay on behalf of the employee. So this is for tax exempt entities only. Um, and then for tax exempt employers, you would enter the smaller of line 16 or line 19 here and then on form 990T. Um, so uh, for, I apologize, 
um, for this is for tax exempt small employers you would skip these two lines go down here fill out 19 and 20 for partnerships and S corporations you'll stop on line 16 uh, report that on Schedule K and then everyone else will stop right here on line 16 and this is what you would report on IRS form 3800 uh, which is the general business credit so line 16 is what most people will go to and then depending on your uh, entity's tax status uh, you would proceed accordingly so um, it turns out that our for-profit non-tax exempt business uh, would stop here on line 16 report eight thousand three hundred thirty three dollars in part three of the general business credit tax form uh, and then uh, depending on you know your nonprofit status you or your pass-through status uh, you may need to use 17 18 19 or 20 and report those on uh, your applicable tax forms uh, that's all we have for this tax form it is fairly straightforward but with the worksheets it can become a little bit more cumbersome uh, most of this is probably solvable with your payroll software in terms of calculations but it's important to understand how the mechanics work of this so if you um, if you want more information on how to complete this tax form we've written a complete article which you can find on our website simply go to teachmepersonalfinance.com type in IRS form 8941 and you should see uh, this form uh, this article up here and uh, if you like our articles please subscribe to our newsletter if you like our YouTube uh, tutorial videos, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And as always, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please post them in the comment section or send me an email. Thank you very much and have a great day.